Well, I'd like to introduce you to the phase lock loop component from the modulation toolbox. Phase lock loop is abbreviated PLL. And this component will serve as the heart of the FSK demodulator that you'll be using for the caller ID project. So first off, select the passband version of this sub-VI. And the help shows uh, quite a large number of inputs and outputs for this sub-VI. So I'll go ahead and connect up a variety of input front panel controls so that we can experiment with these different inputs. You also notice that some of these are uh, somewhat hiding behind the passband sub-VI selector label there at the bottom. And it takes just a little bit more effort perhaps to get the, the wires to connect, but they are there. And we're looking at the abbreviated help here. Let's go ahead and take a look at the detailed help. And we have two different versions of the sub-VI, so make sure that you're looking at the right one. We're, we're interested in the passband version down here. There's a number of uh, comments that give you some idea about the theory of operation. And you might recognize the PLL block diagram if you've been studying that in your communication systems course. And there are a variety of different filters that are used for the loop filter. And this uh, first version that has simply a unit transfer function is the one that we need for this project. I'll begin by creating an array constant that contains just the single value one. And I'll connect this thing to both filter coefficient inputs. The reverse coefficients are the denominator coefficients for the filter polynomial. And the uh, forward are the, the numerator version. And again, I connect this to both so that way our filter simply looks like a pass through. It just has value one. I'll place the front panel controls that are of interest. Things such as the VCO carrier frequency in hertz, the VCO initial phase in degrees, the VCO gain in degrees per volt, and have this or to give this PLL something to work on. I'm going to place a sine wave function generator. And again, taking a quick tour of the inputs and out outputs here. I'm going to, going to create a variable frequency. And this is where the sampling frequency information gets set up. And to better understand what those 
two values are inside the cluster, we can look on the help page. All right, so the top one is the sampling frequency in Hertz, and the bottom one is the number of samples. So we're at one kilohertz and generating 1,000 samples. And I'll use this waveform data type as the input to the phase lock loop. All right, next let's take a look at the output of the PLL. And in particular, we're looking at the phase error because that will be producing the baseband demodulated output. Go with a relatively low carrier frequency of 10 hertz. And when we apply a 10 hertz waveform, we see that the phase error over time is essentially zero. Now if you look carefully at the beginning you see there's a little bit of a startup transient that shows up but very quickly it locks on to that sinusoid and produces a zero result. Now at this point auto scaling is turned on the y-axis that's why we all of a sudden start to see some significant phase error showing up or apparently significant. If we turn off auto scaling we see that it as is actually very very close to zero. Notice that as the frequency of the sinusoidal oscillator increases, it's always able to, to lock on. But we do see a little bit of a shift in the, the offset. That is, we see the phase error is, is a constant, but it does tend to track up and down a little bit with frequency. To see this a little bit more quantitatively, I'll use this device to measure the DC component of the phase error. And let me go ahead and adjust the scale to make this a little bit easier to see. Again, consider this result. We see that the average value of this waveform shows up uh, in, in very good agreement with the DC measurement. Now to really start to get a better feel for this, I'm going to go ahead and wrap this in a while loop. And I'll pace the while loop with a time delay And 100 seconds means that the front panel is being updated at 10 times per second, and that makes it fairly responsive then. So again, as you consider different uh, values for our input sinusoid, we see that that phase error average value is proportional to the frequency of the input. And that's really the key. The, the PLL is, is uh, essentially tracking that sinusoid, but then the phase error being proportional to the frequency is what allows us to distinguish these shifts in frequency that are associated with the FSK signal. Now the specific value that you get in terms of that proportionality constant relates to this so-called VCO gain input. And you see that for varying levels of VCO gain, a given frequency deviation shows up as a different value for the phase error. Now the other thing I'd like to mention is uh, the transient response.
notice that we can either have a, a fairly long transient response or a fairly short transient response. And this is the other factor you have to keep in mind as you adjust these parameters. Ideally, we'd allow, we would like it to be able to track a quick change in the frequency uh, fairly quickly, but yet we don't want to spend a lot of time with overshoot problems. All right, so hopefully these experiments give you a little bit better idea of how the PLL device can be used as an FSK demodulator. And you'll be wanting to be able to adjust these, these values in order to optimize the use of the PLL in your own demodulator for the caller ID FSK demodulator.